Yo, what is up, everyone? Um, with relic sets rolling around really soon, I'm going to be talking about the active versus passive relic sets and if which ones are worth it or which ones aren't worth it. Um, so yeah. Without further ado, relic plus. So passive relic sets are basically the ones with the RFX, like Divine Demise, Babylon's Prisoner, Kyaki Yagyo, Sharp Edge, uh, Path of Divinity, and Shining Regalia. Um, these are usually, the, in my opinion, the, the, the actually, like, good ones, the ones that, that I would actually deem are worth using. Like, Shadow Regalia reduces your Holy Form cooldown, and Kakiagio gives you two glove cards. Sharp Edge is also two glove cards, but a PvP version. The Babylon's Prisoner isn't that good, in my opinion. And then Path and Divinity also isn't that good, in my opinion. I think there's a new one that, would, that isn't showing up, or is it one of the ones that I'm missing? No. I don't know. Babylon's Prisoner is the decent one. This is like a situationally good. Um, and essentially active skills are the combat perks, and I have two that give uh, bonuses. So I have the Immortal Gods, which when mounted gain 3% holy damage boost. Um, boost will not continue when unmounted. This can trigger up to four times per battle. And then there is the other one I have, which is Thunderous Fury. With 120 seconds after casting your first class, you get into an extra holy attack every 10 seconds. The attack, holy attack increases by 100. Three stacks max, the effect increases in the battle. So as you guys can see, just by looking at the effects, these don't seem to be nearly as good as, let's say, Divine Demise, which is, upon writing more money, automatically use a weapon card to transform after the transformation ends. You'll return to the previous mounted status and inherit and inherit the mounted attributes in rage for transformation. So basically, um, I, I've already showed you guys this before in my video where I actually showed off the relic set. But basically, you go to your farm. Um, I have a little bit of a headache, excuse me. But I just go to farm, press transform, wait for my transform to run out. Wow, all of my pros are on auto trigger. Okay. Oh my gosh, this takes forever. Alright, so when the transform ends, you guys can clearly see that I'm remounted up on my, on my war mount. And I got all my boosts and effects from the war mount. Um, whatever, whatever, whatever. So that's what a passive skill is. Something that you don't have to actively activate. So in my opinion, I think honestly, if you were to just get all the passive skills, that in itself would honestly be good. Like, I, it, like passive divinity might not be the best, but it's still a damage bonus, you know what I'm saying? Um, Babylon's Prisoner, while it can be situational, can actually be very good in terms like, in, ter in places like Gate of Time or Ruins Duel, this can, this can actually, in my opinion, um, perform relatively well, in theory at least, I haven't tested it, I'm not probably not going to get it this time around, so yeah. Um, active skills, let me read if there are any active skills that are actually worth it. Each class inflicts extra damage, yeah, this... I think it might be one of the better ones because it reduces the damage you receive from monsters. But yeah. Um, let's see. This set, I have those two. Cycle Revelation. So yeah. Um, basically, the passive skills are the active skills are the ones that you don't really want to have. So um, when you are doing your Song of the Ocean and you're wondering what relic sets to get, I would recommend getting all of the passive relic sets. And then they've also added in the green relic tickets, which are going to bring back the old sets, I believe. So we have China Regalia here, which I believe if you go to the spiral, no, limit tab, you can buy the sacred tokens and get you some, which I believe will go towards the old relic set. Um, and you'll be able to get the shiny Regalia set. But also, the shiny Regalia is in the um, epic... It's in the... No, this is King Arthur's Force. Is this it? No. Might be all the way bottom. Alright. You can... No, this isn't it. This has got to be it. Sort of like, got to be it, right? Yeah. So you can actually get the, sh the Shiny Regalia set from the... Um, from the shop as well, and and I think you, that you might be able to get this depending on if you can. Um, ma once these are maxed out, I think you might be able to keep redeeming these for extra points and get the epic. And over time, 
eventually be able to get a sign of regalia set free to play potentially. I'm not exactly sure how this really works yet, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, but um, that's how I see it in theory for now. And um, I would recommend getting that, I think that's gonna be one of the better sets, I think that is one of the better sets in general. Um, but I also want to get me the um, two glove cards, because if you pair this with something else... Oh, I think that's how many I need left. Interesting. But if you if you if you pair these with like um, depending on the glove cards like Apollo Cat and uh, the um, Fish Leaf, I think these two are a relatively good combo for PVE damage and things like that. But um, that's my thoughts on relic sets. Those just me just explaining relic sets and um, basically the passive skills are worth it. The active skills are usually typically not worth it unless they have really good skills. Um, so yeah, that's my explanation on relic sets. Passive versus active. And thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed.